Well, welcome everyone to the Evolving Man podcast. I'm the founder of The Awakened Man and your host, Alan DeMonso. You know, many men growing up struggle with being picked on or teased for how our bodies look. You know, as young teenagers, we're getting bullied. Acne becomes a challenge for us, and we just have these feelings of not fitting in, especially in school. And you see, my guest today has such an amazing hero's quest about his transformation from not feeling that he was worthy of anything in life to leading and now mentoring men. And before we get into today's interview, I just want to remind you of our brotherhood, the Band of Brothers. This is our group of our mentoring group of uh, community of strong, resilient men where each man is dedicated to the growth of himself and those of his brothers. And while that's a phenomenal program with great results, if you're really interested in raising the standards that you show up in life as a husband, a father, or an entrepreneur, then I encourage you to participate in our Heroes Quest. It's a 90-day mentoring program aimed to improve at least one aspect of your life. Now, you can find all of this at our membership site at the Waken Man Training Academy at members.theawakenman.net. And with that, let's get on with today's show. Today's man knows who he is, where he stands, and what he aspires to become. Solid in his convictions, owner of his destiny, ever evolving into husbands and fathers our wives and children expect and deserve. We are the masters of our life and the leaders of our homes and community. Welcome to the movement. Stay strong, my brother. Well, as you know, everyone, I like to get started with asking a few questions just to set the stage and get us ready for today's discussion. And so here are my questions for you. Were you bullied at a young age? And how about now? Are you still feeling bullied? And do you overcompensate in some ways just so you can hide your feelings of unworthiness? Well, Ty Wagmar of The Artful Man joins me today, and he's going to share his life journey and how he moved from his feelings of unworthiness into purposeful action. Hi, Ty. Thanks for joining me today. It's great to have you here. Alan, thank you. It's a pleasure. Right, right on. Good to see you. Now, you're a fellow Canadian, aren't you, my friend? Yeah, you bet. Just over here in Ontario, in uh, Lakefield, Ontario. So about two hours outside of Toronto. Uh, excellent. Good to hear. Right on. You know, I was reading yeah. a bit of your backstory and I found it really heart wrenching and yet heartwarming all at the same time, because so much of that story resonated with me about how I grew up. And how and so I was wondering if you'd be able to share your hero's journey that transformed you from where you were to who you are today. Yeah, that's um, definitely a deep question and uh, a deep and dark and light story, to be honest. Um, you know, we're talking about growing up as a young boy and being bullied and picked on and feeling like you don't fit in. And, you know, I kind of checked off all those boxes when I was going through high school and intermediate. Um, you know, I just kind of felt like I never had that group of friends, never really had relationships, struggled with acne, feeling a little bit overweight, you know, being a part of sports teams and all the guys are taking their shirts off and I'm like, ah, I don't really want to take my shirt off. And, you know, it definitely hindered my performance. And, um, and it's interesting how those things really stick with us as we move through life and as we, you know, evolve into a man and start to grow up. And, you know, that's where, I speak a lot about in the work that I do about our protective mechanisms mm -hmm. and how we, how we protect ourselves and how we shield ourselves from the world so that we're not hurt, you know, whether that's at work, whether that's in so social atmospheres, whether that's in our relationships, you know, we've created these protective mechanisms to make sure that we move through life feeling safe and secure. And the process that I went through was having those protective mechanisms in place was actually cutting off my energy and my flow of my potential. Because for many years, I walked around with my guard up, like super vigilant state, 
eyeing everything up, making sure I was in control of every situation. You know, I spent a lot of time working in a bar and it was like that hyper focus of worst case scenario. And that kind of protective mechanism was really kind of messing with my potential to evolve into, you know, my true potential. Yeah, for sure. I can totally relate to that. I spend a large part of my career in hospitality and I, I kind of get a sense of what you're saying, right? We have this persona that we put out there because it's our way to, to protect and keep ourselves safe. And, uh, and that'll show up in different aspects. And, and now you, you did some other things too, right? Like you're pretty, even though you're talking about, and as a young man, you were concerned with taking your shirt off, but you're, you're, as a young adult, though, you really evolved and got into other sports and even some extreme sports, correct? And tell us a little bit about that part of your life and how that was somewhat transformative as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that plays a big role in overcompensating or compensating for how I was feeling inside. And, you know, so growing up feeling overweight and not accepted for how I looked, I really transformed into taking control of my physical body. And that's when I made this decision that I'm never going to be picked on again. I'm going to look awesome. I'm going to be um, intimidating to protect myself. And that's when I really started pushing myself into more like extreme sports. I spent a lot of time racing motocross. I I also went from motocross to stunt riding motorcycles. So we had our street bikes and we would do like entertainment shows at monster truck events, go out, be the entertainment at halftime and, you know, stunt our bikes. I moved into training mixed martial arts where I had a couple amateur fights. I was like really trying to thrive and push myself physically to to get outside validation, you know, like when I full circle it, that that's what I was chasing was number one, the adrenaline, number two, outside validation that I'm the fastest, I'm the strongest, you know, I'm going to be known for something. And that something is going to be a physical ability. So even from the mixed martial arts, I started running like the tough mutters, I ended up getting invited down to the world's toughest mutter, which was in New Jersey. And that was a 24 hour, like super marathon where basically you would just run as long as possible. And, you know, at that point in my life, it was like the pinnacle of my physical conditioning. Like I was running 20, 30 K as like maintenance runs and was really preparing myself. And that's where I hit a huge injury was when I was down in New Jersey, I actually tore my whole shoulder apart while I was in that event. And that was my turning point of being this physical being to being lost and not knowing who I was. So that injury led me down into, you know, my own darkness of being confused of who I was and what I represented in this world because I wasn't performing anymore. I wasn't being validated for my physical abilities and ranking and competing. And I was like, well, if I'm not doing this, who, who am I now? And that's where, you know, you go from a pinnacle of what you think is important to hitting a very dark, deep hole, rock bottom of lots of things starting to open up, maybe not in the best way uh in in the in the depths of injury yeah no in, kidding injuries and recovery yeah no kidding seeing you got a chance to experience that at a at a fairly long young age and i know i'm uh, i'm in my mid 50s now and as the idea of a retirement looms closer the thought of and some of the research you see i read now on older men and when they lose when they retire how quickly that they they will pass on. Like I read somewhere it was a third, a third of men that have, that don't have a purpose, something more to live for after retirement end up by dying like five years earlier than Mm -hmm. those that do have a purpose. 
And, uh, you know, and it's, it's a yeah. sad state when you need to, when you're at that age in life. And now you're starting to discover that at a, at a far earlier age, but it's not any easier because you still, it's still a journey to go through. And so you, you talk about navigating your way out of this darkness, right? And you talk about it not being a linear process. And I wonder if you can describe that for us of what, what you mean by it not being a linear process. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's when we hit our own rock bottom and whether that's an injury or a relationship loss or a career loss or addictions, and I had kind of experienced all of those in that time period, you know, we, we have a choice. We can either stay where we are or we can start climbing out of it. And that's where when I'm saying it wasn't a linear process, it wasn't a straight ladder climb, you know, it wasn't a, a it wasn't a straight ramp, it wasn't a, a steady incline, it was like a roller coaster of ups and downs and getting sober and then going back into addiction and, you know, dealing with drugs and alcohol really hindered the recovery of my body, which then really kind of affected the way that my mind was moving through this process. And that's where, you know, through a lot of the things that I'd self educated, and some of the mentoring that I had in my life, I, I've kind of just realized that it's not just going to be a steady walk, it's going to be a leap, a jump, a crouch, a crawl, a pull up, a run up the hill. And it's once we get the, I, I guess I could say, um, you know, the idea and understanding that we are our own drive and that it isn't going to be the easiest, but as long as I keep taking one step forward, I'm going to make my progress in one way or another. Absolutely. That is so true, Ty, that it's about one foot in front of the other, one foot in front of the other. And, and, and that's what gets you through. And it's not about the about that straight line. That's, that's so, uh, that's so true and very insightful for, uh, for a young guy to, to have that, especially with what you've gone through. Now, you've also talked a little bit about, you know, you had to lose yourself in order to find yourself. And I wonder if you can expand mm -hmm. on that thought as well. Yeah, that, that to me, it kind of gives me goosebumps when I hear you say that. And it, it has a lot of meaning to me. And it's, it's a part of the message that I like to share is, you know, we really, we really don't know who we are until we've lost ourselves and then we rebuild, you know, and that isn't something that only happens once. That is something that's going to happen to us multiple times throughout life, but it's just going to be different circumstances, different, different environments, different reasoning. But, you know, losing myself was losing that, that athletic, um, the athletic, like, perspective and the athletic vision and persona of me to then rediscovering like what my purpose is here during my lifetime. Oh, great. Yeah. And that's, and that's where it's like, you know, I lost the one side of me, but because of that, I actually became more in tune with purpose and passion and what I like to call my Dharma. You know, I tapped into my Dharma yeah. and for anybody listening, like if Dharma doesn't resonate with you, I, I tapped into like my purpose and why I feel like I'm here during this time on the planet. Outstanding. Outstanding, Ty. That is phenomenal. Phenomenal. Now it's about this time as well that you started to do as you're doing your healing work and you're working through some working through some things, you're also starting to do learn about energy work, weren't you? And this energy yeah. work was that really, I think was that catalyst that really helped you move through the darkness and really process what you needed to process. So tell us about this energy work and the, and the things that you had encountered and, and how that helped transform your life. Yeah. So, you know, the energy work started with my own personal practice and it started with learning and educating myself on yoga and meditation and also in empowering practices like self-reflection, journaling, 
um, and spending a lot of time in nature. I, I started to kind of reclaim my power and my connection to the divine and the energy that is surrounding us and the energy that's flowing through us. And when I started to kind of connect to that internal part of myself is when the doors started to open and the teachers started to come in. And that's what led me, um, you know, synchronicity and one event led to another is what led me to um, uh, a coaching institute, an actual in-person coaching school. And that's IPEC, if anybody's interested in looking it up. Um, I-P-E-C, IPEC Coaching. And what they focus on with coaching and their, and their model of coaching is looking at everybody as energy. And we're all resonating at different levels of energy. And we can be in a catabolic state or an anabolic state of energy. And unfortunately, a lot of the people nowadays are in a catabolic state. They're in a negative state of energy. They're not resonating in a positive frequency. They're not happy with their job. They're not happy with their body. They're not happy with their relationships. So their vibration isn't that high. Mm. And that's where the coaching came in was how to evaluate somebody and how they're re resonating and how to take them through a process to just step it up a little bit and then just step it up a little more and then a little more and just work through different techniques and, and different kind of, um, you know, practices to help them move through and shift up in their level of resonance. And that is what, you know, sparked the coaching of course, like that, that, that was my Dharma was that in public speaking, I have done a little bit of public speaking about, you know, health and wellness and just the way that we show up in this world. And, and again, each event leading to another event and synchronicities just kept opening more doors that just, I, I kept, I kept up my self education, you know, I just kept going deeper and deeper and deeper where right now I'm actually enrolled in Dr. Gabor Mate's Compassion Inquiry. And that's nice. a one year intensive training that evolves around addiction and trauma, which again is energy and, and how we show up. So it's been quite a wild, wild ride for sure, to say the least. No kidding. Well, you're definitely a, a student learner and you know, a lifelong learner. And I think that's, you know, as, as men, the more that we do that, the better we get to understand who we are as individuals. And I think I really applaud you for continuing that growth and not getting that sense that I've arrived because we never truly have arrived. And there's always more to learn about who we are. Right. And uh, Gabor Mate's mm -hmm. stuff is outstanding exactly. work. And I think uh, you're going to do phenomenal with, with that work. Now you mentioned him, but there are, uh, there yeah, were three you. mentors that I noticed on uh, in doing some research that seemed to really resonate with you. And, wonder if you could tell us a little bit about how the impact that these gentlemen had on your, on your life. And the, the three men that I have are Francis Wheeler, David Dieta, and John mm -hmm. Wineland. So tell us a little bit about each of those individuals and their impact directly on, on you and your transformation. Yeah. So those three gentlemen, in my perspective, are three of the leading mentors in men's work and in this initiation of being a man and the masculinity within this time period. And Francis Weller, he, he, he really talks a lot about the initiation process that a lot of us men aren't going through anymore because of how cut off we are of, you know, like tribal times. And like, that's what he talks about is like, you know, in the past, in the tribes, the men had to go through an initiation process to become known as a man in their community. They had to do something kind of outrageous and be in the forest by themselves with no clothes on for X amount of time and come back and they would come back into the community as, as a man and they would sometimes even get a new name. And that's why I really like his work because he's teaching this idea of initiation of men 
in Western civilization and in modern times. And when we learn about initiation and we start to kind of, you know, if we start to kind of think about our life, we can actually start to see times that kind of were an initiation process. Like, when did you leave the nest? If you've left the nest, maybe you haven't left the nest yet, but you know, like, when did you move away from your mother? When did you go out on your own? When did you, you know, start to become something for yourself? So that's where he, he touches a lot on that. And I highly recommend anyone into men's work to have a look into his work. And then David Data, he again is like one of the leading men who talks about masculinity and, and the feminine within every individual, whether you're man or woman, you have a feminine energy and you have a masculine energy. And it's about becoming aware of that, learning about them, finding a balance, being harmonized between the two of them to really start your evolution of healing and relationships and the way we connect with our partners and the men around us and yeah the way of the superior man is one of his profound books for men's work yeah and um the other one he has is seeking sex through god which i haven't read but my partner has and she was the one that actually led me to the way of the superior man and you know i read that book got hooked and i actually took his online training as well which was like a really cool experience and then John Wineland is actually kind of David Data's protege. And, and John Wineland studied under him for years and years and years. But why I list them both as kind of men that I look up to is because John Wineland is kind of, he has a different language to the way that he teaches the type of work. And some of it I find easier to understand. And he does a lot of like, kind of men's group work as well so it, he's just like another kind of angle of something that's just super powerful right so it's nice to have different perspectives from different men but it's all kind of the same thing when it comes down to to the root of it absolutely and those are three three powerful and influential gentlemen that you have uh have there for sure i'm familiar with with those three gentlemen you know and we got to we've got to a point now where with uh, with your transformation now that you're at a point where now you're starting to offer programs for men aren't you and so you have yes. a few different things so tell us a little bit about the work that you're doing now in around this men's work idea yeah so kind of where i'm at right now with my men's work and coaching and mentoring is you know i do one-on-one -on -one work with men and women which ranges from you know a month to three month kind of periods where we kind of go through a, a somewhat of a program. And I'm also, I'm, I'm also formulating group work that goes along the same kind of program as that because I find that a lot of men, I shouldn't say a lot, many men aren't ready to dive deep into a committed journey of opening their heart and opening their emotions because you know it can be a rat's nest and it can be a can of worms you open that up it's just like psh, psh, psh. <laughs> this relationship's gone quit my job moved out of my house you know yeah. <laughs> so that's that's where i'm really working towards creating some more group work so that men feel as though they have more of a container of men to kind of work on that um, besides the, the coaching modalities, I'm also a, a, a certified breathwork facilitator. Excellent. So I'm, I bring my breathwork into my one-on-one -on -one coaching as well, but I also do breathwork sessions outside of the coaching. Um, breathwork is like a very, very empowering and powerful tool that I've brought into my life that I just love sharing with people. I just there's so much value to learning breath work and, and creating a practice. And then besides that is, you know, just like yourself, I'm working towards creating my own community of men to create a brotherhood. Um, it's coming together. It's going to be launching in the next two months. I've kind of been waiting for summer to end. 
let everybody get summer out of their system and we're moving into December and into January to start the new year. And yeah, you know, brotherhoods and men's circles is just, you know, an amazing tool for us men to come together. And I've received so much, um, I don't know, like, I don't know what, how to, how to even describe it, but my sense of connection to men and brotherhood is just deepened so much. And there's so much trust there with the men that I'm currently involved with that. Yeah. It just, it's rebuilding my trust with men Yeah, and helping me relate and helping me understand that I'm not the only one that's struggling with X, X, X and X or whatever it is. We all are. And when we realize we're all struggling with something, we don't feel as alone anymore. We have a sense of community and support and a safe container. So yeah, those are the things that I, that I offer and working on. And like you said, it's just a never ending journey. It's always evolving. Absolutely. And, and that is great work that you're doing, uh, Ty, because uh, it's so needed, right? And there's, uh, there's programs for men out there. And there's just not enough, though, that are focused strictly on men. And, and I think the, the more of us that are out there, and doing it to what resonates with us, and we, we, we end up by being that, that beacon for them, for them to have a place to come and feel safe. And so uh, yeah. you're doing phenomenal work. And I really applaud you for, uh, uh, thank for you. getting on that on that path. And and so as we're getting close to wrapping up here for today, I just wanted to I'll throw a bit of a curveball at you. And after everything sure. that we've talked about this evening, you could think of, you know, a couple of keys or maybe three keys that you'd like the listeners to take away from like your personal journey and everything else that we've talked mm-hmm. today that if they if you wanted them to remember three things, what would the what would those things be? Three things. Oh, so hard to bring it down to three. <laughs> <laughs> you know, number one is learning and understanding that our reality and our outside world is a reflection of our internal world. Mm. So if we want to make changes out here, we first have to start in here. This is where the change starts and nobody's going to Nobody's going to make that change for you. You're the only one that can change what's going on in your heart, your soul, in your mind. And that's, you know, one of the first crucial steps to making big changes, making shifts in your life. Number two would be the road to becoming your, the road towards reconnecting with yourself or recreating yourself and stepping into your power and evolving into the best version of yourself is not a linear process. Mm. And just to keep in, just to, to, just to remind yourself just to not give up in that, when you start that internal path of self-development, the universe has your back. You know, your higher self has your back. God has your back. However you want to look at it, you are supported by something that you can't see. And as long as you have that positive intention and you keep taking one step in front of the other, you're on the right track. And don't be afraid to ask a fellow man for help because we're not here to be in competition with each other. We have to realize that we come from a tribe. So seek help or assistance, find community, and don't be afraid to ask for help. Absolutely. I feel like that's, those will be my top three. Outstanding. Well, that was fantastic for, uh, pulling something out of the top of your head. That was just amazing. Well done, Ty. Thanks. And I want to thank you for spending the time with me today to, we talked, we unpacked quite a bit about, uh, about your personal journey and the work that you're doing as well. And, and hopefully we're able to shed some light on the importance of men learning to reconnect with the self and think as men, we, we, we struggle with that. We struggle with not 
with doing that work. I think uh, the more that we can get that word out there to help men do that, then we can, we can all grow and be better men. Now, if they were interested in getting a hold of you and doing some work with you, Ty, what would be the best way they can reach you? Yeah, thanks, Alan. So theartfulman.com is my landing page. And again, theartfulman.com. That has my backstory on it. That has some offerings on that. If you want to get to know me, what I've gone through, it's all there. And on all social media platforms, it's under Ty Wagmar. So that's T-Y, short form for Tyler, if anyone's interested. And last name is Wagmar, W-A-G-M-A-R. Perfect. Well, that's great. It's yeah. so uh, It's been so great to spend time with you today, Ty. I really appreciate uh, reaching out on uh, social media and us finally getting a chance to connect today. And and I'm sure our mental listeners will have uh, had learned a ton from you today. So. Thank you very much, my friend. Yeah, thank you, Alan. It was great to connect. It was a great opportunity to be here with you today. I love what you're doing with the podcast and the brotherhood and the men's work. And, you know, just to add to it, it's like, don't be afraid to reach out, right? Yep. Both of us on social media, we didn't know each other. Hey, man, what's going on? I like what you're doing. I like what you're doing. Sweet. Hey, you want to do this? Let's do this. Sweet. Yeah. Awesome. And and there's a connection, right? And. Absolutely. And that's so important in today's world, especially with everything that's going on. So thank right. you. You're welcome. Right on, my friend. Take care. You too, Alan. Have a good night. Right. So here are a few of my takeaways from my conversation with Ty. The first thing Ty asked us to remember is to recognize that our outer world is a reflection of what's going on inside. And isn't that so true? What it means is that we are accountable and we are responsible for who we are, for where we are and for what we aspire to become. The next thing Ty asked us to remember is that our journey is not a linear path. We are going to stumble. We're going to fall and even crawl at times. And we're going to go fast at times and we're going to slow down. We'll climb to loftier aspirations and then bring us back down to where and back down to earth when our ego gets a little bit too strong. And you see all of that is part of a hero's quest and all men must go through this. It's our rite of passage. And finally, Ty asked us to remember to seek help, assistance, and community in your journey to living the highest and best version of yourself. And so now it's up to you. It's time for you to take some action. You can do that by reaching out to Ty and joining his programs. And you can also start your personal hero's quest by looking at joining our 90-day program, mentoring program, that is. And raise the level that you show up as a father, a husband, brother, and in business. So I'm going to make it real easy for you. At the bottom of this page, there will be a links, links for you to reach Ty, reach out and speak with him, and links to contact myself and have a one-on-one -on -one to discuss to see if you're a fit to start your hero's quest. And you may wonder, why am I saying is it going to, going to be a fit? Well, I can say over the years of doing men's work is that not all men are ready to commit to do what it takes in order to make drastic change in their life. But those that do see such huge advantages, such tremendous change in their life. And if you're that kind of man, that you're ready to make that change, then I look forward to working with you in our brotherhood. Aho, my brothers. Thank you for listening to the Evolving Man Podcast. Are you ready to own your destiny? To become more the man you are destined to be? Join the brotherhood that is the Awakened Man at theawakenedman.net and start forging a new destiny today.